Hello everyone and welcome to a quick little tutorial on how to retarget Sinti characters on the ALS skeleton. My first video on this channel was about this topic but it was more of a tutorial like devlog. Now I'm making a full blown tutorial so let's get started. As you can see this is a clean ALS project. Now I'm gonna import a Sinti character. I will use the Sinti modular pack but whatever character from any pack you use will have the same skeleton and will be the same exact process. Alright, this is my Sinti character that I will retarget to the ALS skeleton. So let's start the process. The first thing we need is to make an IK rig for both of the skeletons. So let's start with it. I will create a folder named retarget and I will right click, animation, IK rig, and IK rig. I will select the animal character first. I will name it ALS IK rig. Alright, open it up. Alright, what we need to do in here is to create bone chains for all of the limbs and stuff that this skeleton has. So let me do it for you and I will show you the final result so you can copy and paste it. Alright, I finished. You can copy and paste it. I made the change for all the bones that are needed for this process. And this is the setup for the Sinti character. Again, you can copy and paste it. So, now what we have to do is to create our IK goals. This is what's gonna help with the hand placement, since the length of the hands of the Sinti character is larger than the ALS mannequin one. So we have to make sure that when he's holding a torch, for example, their hands are going to be in the same position. All right, what we need to do is to create a new solver in the bottom left and make it a full body IK. All right, now let's go to the left hand handout, right click and create new goal. We assign it to the chain and now we have to select the root for this goal. Uh, I will select the, the left clavicle, I will right click and set root bone on selected solver. Alright, now on the details panel I will select the goal, make it absolute and expose the position. Now we will do the same thing for the right hand. We create a new solver. Full body IK, and then go to hand R. Where is it? Right here. Right click. New IK go. Assign go. Click on the clavicle R. Set root bone selected solver. Click the go. Make it absolute and expose the position. Okay. Now that we're done with the IK rigs, we'll create an IK retargeter. So right click, animation, IK rig, and IK retargeter. We want the animations from the ALS character to go to the Sinti one. So we'll select the ALS IK rig and name it ALS. Toots, Sinti, Retargeter. Alright, open it up. And as you can see, we only have the ALS Animan character. What we need to do is to assign the other IK rig we made, which is the Sinti Modular IK rig. Alright, let's make an offset so they don't overlap. Target mass offset in the x direction is 2 meters. Alright, this seems good. Now, what we have to do is to make the poses of these two characters match as close as possible. We'll go to the edit mode and I will select the upper arm, turn it down 40 degrees. I will do the same on the right upper arm. The lower arm should be a bit more forward. Oh, about 20 degrees, I think. Yeah, this seems good. The lower arm left, 20 degrees as well, and the legs are a bit more wide over here. I'll select the thigh, 5 degrees more, and the same to the other leg. Again, you can take as much time as you need to make it look better. Now, for this tutorial, I think we're good. And now let's select an animation to see if it works. Um, walk forward. Alright, as you can see, it is pretty close. I'm happy with the result. 
So now we need to create an animation blueprint for the Sinti character to copy the poses from this one. Let's do it. We hit right click, animation, animation blueprint. And for the skeleton, I will select the SK character base. This is my Sinti character and hit create. And I will name it ABP Sinti. All right, open it up. And what you need to do to see if it works is right click, retarget pose from mesh, click on this node, select the IK retargeter that we made, uh, select use attached parent, and just plug it on the output pose. Hit compile. Now open the ALS animan blueprint. And what you have to do is go to your mesh, add skeletal mesh, name it Sinti or whatever you like, select your Sinti character, use animation blueprint and select the ABB Sinti. And now I will select the mesh, the animan, and I will make it invisible. So hit compile and let's see if this worked. All right, it works well, but there are some issues. For example, if I get the torch, as you can see, it is not properly attached to the Sinti character's head. The same for the pistol and every other item. And also, if I mantle, I will slow down time. As you can see, the character's hands go through the mesh. Now, we have to fix this. That's because the Sinti's character's hands are larger than the ALS mannequin ones. So what we need to do now is to change some things in the Sinti animation blueprint. We will add an IK rig node, select it, and select the Sinti IK rig we made earlier. All right, what we need to do is to determine when the Sinti's character's hands need to be in the exact same position as the ALS character's one. So the, the torch is held by the left hand. The pistol is held by the right hand. When he's mantling, he's doing it with both hands. So we need to determine which hand or hands should follow the ALS characters one. So go to the event group, right click and initialize event blueprint, initialize animation. Get the pawn owner, cast it to ALS animal. Promote it to a variable and also get the mesh. Get the mesh and promote it to a variable. Alright, now in the event blueprint update animation, we'll check if our character is valid and if he is, we'll make a sequence. First of all, we're going to check if the left hand of the ALS character is in a valid position, which means it's not on 0, 0, 0. Okay, watch, so I took the mesh and the location of the left hand, and if it's not 0, 0, 0, I set a variable that I created to its position. I named the variable left hand goal, and I will collapse those nodes to be more readable. I'll name it left hand IK goal. And I will do the same thing for the right hand. Again, I took the mesh, the hand R location, and if it's not zero, zero, 0, I will set this location to a variable that I created. I will also collapse these nodes and name them right hand IK goal. Okay, now we're going to create the conditions whether the Sinti's hands should follow the ALS ones. So I will make a branch. 
This is going to be for the left hand. Left hand only. Okay, the conditions are if he's holding a torch. So I'll get the ALS character, get overlay state, and if it's equal to knockbow torch, we will do the left hand only. If it's not, we're gonna make another branch, and this is gonna be for the right hand. Right hand only. Now, the right hand will be for the pistol. So, do the same. Control C, Control V. And if the overlay state is pistol one hand, do only the right hand. Now, we'll check if we need to do both hands. So, copy and paste it. Both hands should be in the pistol two hands. We'll create an four and do the same for the other overlays. Uh, rifle. Also, the bow. The binoculars. And you can do the others by yourself. I will not do them right now. And this is the both hands. And if it's false, we'll do no hands. So I'll make a reroute and say no hands. Okay, I forgot to add the mental link in here. So if the movement state is equal to mental link, we also have to do both hands. All right, and now we will create a function that will update those alpha values, the locations are going to be the goals we created earlier. Okay, so now let's make the function. Create a new function and call it update hand alphas and as inputs add two booleans. Do left and do right and create a sequence. First create two float variables for the alphas. I will name them left hand alpha float and I will duplicate this and name it right hand alpha. All right, I will make a branch and if we have to do the left hand I will set the left hand alpha to be a lerp between the current value and 1 with an alpha of 0.2 and instead of a branch I will make a select float if it's true it's going to be 1 else it's going to be 0 all right, I will do the same for the right hand. So I will set the right hand alpha to be a lerp between the current value with an alpha of 2 and make a select float again. One if it's true, zero if it's not. So we created the function, and now if it's left hand only, we'll click only the left hand. If it's right hand only, we'll do the right. If it's both hands, We'll do them both, and no hands will be none of them. So, compile, and let's test if it works. Whoa, it clearly doesn't, so I missed something. Oh yeah, we didn't flag the alphas. Left hand alpha and right hand alpha. And the goals need to be world space and not additive so you should change this all right let's test to see if this works so let's hit play make it full screen and now if i select the torch as you can see it's placed on the hand 
All right, now if I select the pistol one hand, as you can see, it is also attached to the hand. If I select binoculars, it's also right. Rifle, both of the hands are in the correct position. And let's check the mantle. Again, I will slow down time. Oops, wrong button. Z. Okay, jump. And as you can see, the hands are properly attached to the floor. So, that's how I made the CNT retargeting system. If you have any more questions, leave them down in the comments below. And like the video if you found it helpful. And I hope to see you in the next one.